Good morning and welcome back to Bold Faith Bible and this Bible study with me. We are continuing our study through the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, and we are at the point where we will be seeing the, the stoning of Stephen. Stephen has given his a, a testimony, his defense of the gospel, and has pointed out how the Jewish people at every step have opposed the prophets that God had sent them. And now they will respond. Let me dip back just a little bit into verse uh, uh, 50, 52. The accusation that they will be responding to. Which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who had previously announced the coming of the righteous one. Whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You who received the law as ordained by angels, and yet did not keep it. Let's begin with the word of prayer and a time of confession to make sure our hearts are right before we see their response to God's word here. Lord God, we, we pray that you would open our hearts, that you would humble our hearts so that we may hear and listen what you have to say to us. Let us not be like these people who responded with violence and anger and defensiveness when they were confronted with the truth. Help us to walk humbly, Lord, and hear your word. That we lift up our sins and our failings to you now and confess them to you. The Lord is gracious to forgive. In Christ we find the forgiveness of our sins. And we are cleansed from our unrighteousness. Lord God, our study this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Picking up in Acts chapter 7 starting in verse 54. They've just heard this accusation. They've been told that they don't keep the law that they say that they do and that they have betrayed and murdered the Messiah. Verse 54. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and they began gnashing their teeth. Right? Just kind of... It kind of means literally to grind your teeth. It's just... They, they, they couldn't believe what they were hearing. It made them so mad. They, they, they had a physical reaction to how mad they were. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a, with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. So we see this response. This is not a good response. It's not a rational response. The accusation of betraying and murdering the, the righteous one, or the Messiah, the Christ. Uh, Messiah is the Hebrew word for it. Christ is uh, the, the Greek word. They all mean the same thing. The promised coming one that was going to save the people of Israel. How, how do you respond when someone has hard words for you? Now, some people, they just say things just to hurt you, right? I mean, and for that, I'm not saying necessarily that you always take everything seriously, but... Uh, 
do you have a teachable spirit? When somebody uh, who has reason to know, and they may be an enemy. Sometimes your enemies will be the most honest with you, and they can tell you and point out your faults better than your friends would ever. Um, if you have family members, they can be awfully good at that too, right? But how do you respond when someone brings criticism to you or points out that you are off track, significantly off track? Now, sometimes they think you're off track and you don't think you're off track, right? Do you... The closer it hits to home, the more it hurts. Let's just put it that way. If you know you ought to be doing something or not doing something and someone points it out, the more visceral your reaction, the more agitated you become, the more you kind of show that you know what they're saying is true. If someone who is a crazy person comes up to you and says, you got blue feathers coming out of your head. It doesn't even make sense. I mean, are you going to be super bothered by that? Are you going to get like really mad about that? No. But if you have a fault, you know, if you have a physical thing with you that, that you don't really like and they point that out, then you get mad, right? You get mad. But like, how could they do that? How could they say that? You know, we all have areas of our lives that we need to clean up and we need to be better at. And sometimes people are going to point that out. Do we have the humility to take it? Or do we respond with defensiveness and anger? We need to, we need to receive the truth and, and graciously um, accept it and, 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 and see, see to changing, right? Verse 55 and 56 so they gnash their teeth at him. They have this physical response to him. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed intently into heaven and saw Christ at the right hand of God. And uh, how do we know this? Well, that's because of what he said, right? He, he told everyone what he saw. And remember that uh, Luke, who's writing this, did have uh, close interaction with Paul who was there to eyewitness this. Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. Here, Stephen sees Jesus rise up. He sees Stephen's sacrifice. He sees Stephen's uh, victory. And Jesus rises from his seat to receive the Bible says, precious in the eyes of the Lord are the deaths of his righteous ones. Your, your life and the sacrifices that you make are absolutely important to the Lord. The Lord feels them and feels the faith that it takes uh, to make those steps. And he delights in that. Your steps of faith, your faithfulness, is not unnoticed. God sees. And secondly, um, this is the vision that Stephen needed at that moment. He was going through a really rough time. This was a, not only were they about to murder him, but this was his ruling. Uh, these were all the leaders of the temple, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees of one accord. They were all focused in on murdering him, it, it would be understandable for him to have a moment of question. All the religious leaders who I'm supposed to look up to are all of one mind saying that I am evil and that I found. And perhaps he needed this vision of Jesus in this moment in order to stay strong. The testimony of saints throughout the ages is that God will give us the strength in that moment that we need. The Bible says that we will not be tested beyond what we are able to bear, but that he will provide a way of escape so that we may stand up under the temptation. How could, how could you 
survive? How could you walk through being murdered for your faith? The promise is that if you have to walk through that, Jesus will give you the strength to walk through it. He will give you the encouragement to walk through it in that moment. So they, with a loud voice, they, they hear him saying this, I'm seeing Jesus in heaven, in his glory, and they, they cover their ears, it says, and they rush at him with one impulse, and they just start attacking him physically, and they drive him out of the city and begin stoning him. There's this, it's just total violence, there's no reason, there's no like, what you're saying is blasphemy. Do we have two witnesses? Do, you know, let's go through the proceedings. It's just violence. They just attack him. And that, that has no place in us. That should have no place in us. We are to be people of reason, grace, and truth. Rage has no place. I'm not saying that in certain circumstances and certain roles and jobs and employment that you may have that there is not a place for, uh, for uh, violence, violence that is uh, ordered by the government and such that, that can be totally legitimate. But rage, this unthinking just violence they were not responsibly executing their jobs. They were so mad and angry at him that they just started throwing stuff at him, hitting him, and driving him out of the city. We see this rage. It's murderous. And it should have no, no place in Christendom. All those who claim to be followers of Christ should have no part in this. And finally, in verse 59 through 60, they went and said, went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. That is very close to the very words of Jesus as he died. Right? Stephen was following the footsteps of Jesus and was following closely. What a wonderful testimony. And he's asking God to forgive the people that are doing this, including a man named Saul, who would later become Paul, of whose account most of this book of Acts and much of the New Testament is written by. So he calls on the name of the Lord and he starts praying for those who are persecuting him. Instead of rage, we should be known for holiness and love. Now, we really should be known for love. But so often today, people want to spin love as whatever they want it to mean. And so that's why I say holiness and love. There's the affection, there's the 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 care, the concern, the sacrifice of love, but there's also holiness. Without holiness, it is not love. We must do things that are appropriate, not just whatever seems what like we would like to have. To ignore other people's sin is not love, but to walk with them accept them as they are, but then to help them to become all that God would have them to be, is love. To accept people as they are and, ex and allow them to stay where they are is not love. And we should stop pretending that it is. To speak lies and say, what you're doing is okay, what you're doing is great, when it is sin, is not love. We need to be truthful, but we also need to be full of love and grace for others. Stephen spoke the truth, and they murdered him for it. 
But in the course of it, he gave the good testimony. The word martyr in Latin means one who testifies. It's not that one dies, but rather that one testifies. And the ultimate testimony is at the end of your life and at the cost of your life, sharing the gospel and the good news. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you and just uh, consider those things. How do you accept um, rebuke or correction? Humbly or with rage? Lord God, I pray that you bless each one watching this video today, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you fill them with your light, that we would see you, Jesus, in holiness and in love that we would see your glory and that you would equip us for the challenges of each day. We pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen.